Welcome to this video as part of the video training series on how to set up your Stripe account. Your Stripe account is will be your payment processor for all things within givebacks, including fundraisers and your online store sales so that you can take payments through your givebacks organization. Before you begin setting up your givebacks Stripe account, you will need to have the following things ready. It would be good to have your organization's EIN handy, your organization's legal name as it's on file with the IRS. If you're unsure what your organization's legal name is, I will share a link to an IRS website in the description of this video where you can come in and enter your EIN in the search term box here and it will find a 990 that's on file with the IRS so that you can look at that and see what your organization's legal name is. It's important that you enter your legal name, specifically what how it's on file with the IRS so that Stripe can verify your organization. In addition to those two things, you'll also need your bank information that you want to receive your payouts for your, for your organization at through your Stripe account. You'll want to have information handy that's for the officer that you want to be listed as the primary person tied to the account for your organization. This information you need for the officer should include your the officer's address, the officer's email, the officer's phone number, the birth date, and their social security number. Stripe is required to collect a social security number for your officer in relation to what's known as the KYC laws or know your customer laws. This is a legal requirement for them to do so. So you will need to enter an SSN or at least the last four digits of the SSN deciding what, uh, depending on exactly what Stripe does need from you specifically to verify you. Um, you will need to enter at least the last four digits or the whole entire SSN for your officer in order to verify them to put them as the officer tied to your accounts. All right, so if we go ahead and move into getting started setting up, uh, when you open your GiveBack site, if you do not have a current Stripe account set up, you will see a few things. The first being this yellow banner at the top, top that says, please visit your Stripe dashboard to ensure your Stripe account is in good standing. You'll also see an orange X next to set up your Stripe account in the checklist here. That is because obviously you do not have a Stripe account set up yet, so it is not checked off. So if we come over here and we go to store management, we will see edit store settings. And if you do not have a Stripe account set up, you will see a blue set up Stripe account now button. Once you get in to the wizard, to start setting up your Stripe account, you will be asked for an email address and a mobile phone number um, for the organization. Now, keep in mind that my screens might look semi diff a little bit differently because I am in test mode. So um, there are a, a few differences, but for the most part, my screen is going to look exactly like what you're going to see. So if we go ahead and enter um, the email, and the mobile phone number here, we can click continue. And it is going to send you a verification code to um, your phone number that you just entered. You can enter the verification code below. Um, and then it will bring you into the next step of the process. The next step of the process is to tell them what kind of um, organization you are, and you're going to choose non for profit organization for the most part as a give backs organization. Click continue. The next uh, step is to list your legal business name. This is the information that's important um, that it matches what is on file with your IR with the IRS. Um, so you're going to enter that name that you found on the IRS website as we discussed prior or that you are familiar with is on your documentation from the IRS in relation to your organization. And then you're gonna enter your organization's EIN number. That should always be nine digits, just to keep that in mind. Um, you're going to, you can enter a DBA. The DBA can be more like your local unit name if you're a PTA, or if you're a school district, maybe it's your school's uh, name specifically, something that's more familiar um, for you for the name of your organization. Then you're going to enter your um, organization's address. 
And the last thing it's going to ask, well, the last two things it's going to ask you for down here is a phone number. So you can go ahead and enter your phone number and select the industry that you're in. For the most part, you're probably going to choose um, education or something similar to that. You could also choose non for profit usually or a membership organization. Um, so you're going to choose your organization and then you're going to click next. Once you've clicked continue, on the next page is going to ask you for the information relating to the person or the officer you're tying to the account. Now the officer is just tied to the account for verification purposes. You're going to need to enter their first and last name and an email address for them. And then their job title. Their job title is likely president or treasurer. Um, there, that is their position within your organization. I'm going to put president here for today, but that would be their off the officer title of the person in relation to your organization. And then you're going to enter their date of birth. Next, it is going to ask you for the uh, address of the officer tied to your organization, and then a phone number again for the person tied to your organization specifically. Again, this is for verification purposes. And the last four digits most commonly of the SSN, occasionally Stripe may ask for the full SSN or come back and ask for the full SSN of the officer tied to the account. This is because they might have had a problem verifying the person. Um, so they're asking for the full SSN. In most cases, they will be asking for the last four. And again, this is required to provide as part of the KYC or know your customer laws on Stripe's behalf. Um, once you've entered the last four digits of the SSN, you can click continue. And the next page you're brought to is the page to link your bank account. I always suggest if you do not see, um, my page is going to lo look a little bit different. You're going to see um, you're going to see bank options right here on this page. If you do not see your bank option right here in the buttons on this page, I always suggest it's best to click this enter test bank account um, or enter bank account credentials instead button. And that will bring up a page here where you can enter the routing and account number um, directly. This just makes it easier if you just use um, this and enter the details if you do not see the, the bank straight up, but you can search for it and look for it that way. If you see it here, you'll be able to click on it and log in to your bank online and just automatically link it without having to enter the credentials. But if you don't see it right away, you can absolutely click this link and enter the routing and account number directly. When you go ahead and click on an account, uh, and, uh, click on a bank to link it. It's going to pop up with a screen like this. You can click agree and continue to link your account um, to Stripe. You can choose if you have multiple accounts um, at the same bank. You can choose which accounts you want to link here um, and click connect accounts. Now it's going to connect to your bank and you can click done. Okay, once you have linked your account, either by entering those details manually or choosing the bank here, um, you can click continue. Just a quick note, it is good to link a bank account directly and not use the debit card option. That is an option and you can enter a debit card if you prefer. However, I highly suggest that you do not and you use a bank account directly. The debit card can have limits to what is able to be deposited. And so you'll end up having to either come in and swap that out at a later date, or you may end up in a situation where you're just not getting some of your payouts until you figure out what happened and update, update that information. So adding a bank account right away is just a smoother experience and you don't have to worry about what might happen down the road. Okay, if we go ahead and click continue here, that should be about the last step. The next, once you believe that everything is good, you can click agree and submit. 
and you have finished. You should now see that back on your member hub site, you see connected here under the status. You might see pending and that is perfectly okay if you do. If you happen to see that it's staying in pending for longer than an hour or so after you first create the account, please do send us a message at, um, at support at givebacks.com and we can absolutely help you look into that further and figure out what happened but for the most part you should always see this ghosting connected pretty quickly all right that wraps up this part of the training series on setting up your stripe account 